Okay, welcome everyone. It's a couple minutes there after 2 o'clock. There may still be some people who, um, who join a few minutes late. So welcome to anyone who continues to join. Um, I'm Carolyn Parsons and I'm the Registrar and Director of Student Services here at Grenfell Campus Memorial University and I will be hosting this session today. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather today is in traditional Mi'kmaq territory. And we acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Beothic, Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of this province. It's hard to believe that we are one week away from the first day of classes. Uh, and I know this past year has been challenging. And to say we are excited to welcome you back to campus is the understatement of the year, I think. Today's session will give you an overview of our return to campus plan and highlight some of the safety protocols that are in place. We will also highlight some welcome events that are coming up. And most importantly, we will give you an opportunity to ask questions. Some questions have been sent in in advance and we will address those. And, uh, you know, we're here with a large panel of Grenfell representatives, so we should be able to answer most of your questions. So just a quick pre-flight announcement before we get started. Please ensure your mics and video are turned off. This should be the default, but just in case, uh, there's a button on the bottom of your screen where you can mute yourself. There is a chat function on the right-hand side of your screen, so please feel free to type your question in the chat, and we will try our best to answer it during the session. I will warn you that we're actually uh, in the midst of a, a big thunder and lightning storm here in Corner Brook. It just started a few minutes ago. So if you hear any loud bangs when someone is uh, speaking from campus here, it's it's just a little bit of thunder. It's really not that common, but um, today is the day for a big thunder and lightning storm. So before I introduce our full panel, I would like to welcome Grenfell's Vice President, Dr. Ian Sutherland. Thank you very much, Carolyn. And let's also hope that the thunder and lightning doesn't throw out the, uh, the internet. Uh, it's wonderful to be with you all this afternoon. As Carolyn said, I'm Ian Sutherland, Vice President, Grenfell Campus, Memorial University. My pronouns are he and him. Um, I also want to say welcome back to Dr. Kelly Vauden, uh, our Associate Vice President of Research. Uh, Kelly, it's great to see you on the screen. Welcome back. Uh, so, to all of our students, new students, incoming students, I cannot express enough how excited I am, how excited we all are to be welcoming you back in person uh, on to the campus uh, for this fall semester. It's uh, it's been a, a challenging year and a half, and you know the pandemic is not over yet, certainly, but uh, we are moving forwards, and so excited to be bringing everybody back to campus. Now, I would imagine that. Uh, you all, including myself, uh, have some nerves and some anxieties about uh, coming back to campus. Some of that is no doubt because of COVID-19, um, you know, the pandemic's not over, but it's also about, for those of you that are new students, starting your, your journey into university studies, you may have some nerves and anxieties for those that are returning to campus for your second, third, or fourth years uh, as students at Grenfell and Memorial University. What I want to say to all of you is three things. Number one, you got this. You are all remarkable individuals. You got this. The second thing I want to say is we got this. Grenfell Campus has been working extraordinarily hard and will continue to do so to set everything up we can for your success and to work with you. So we got this together. And the third thing, after more than 20 years in uh, higher education university environments, it's going to be great. Every fall semester is always great. Uh, they're always a bit different, but it's going to be great. So you got this, we got this, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And we have a lot to celebrate. You know, uh, we've learned a lot. We've come a long way in over the last year and a half with regards to the pandemic. I mean, just think about the vaccines. Uh, safely, amazing vaccines brought forward by scientists and medical professionals. I'm so proud to to and relieved <laughs> to be fully vaccinated. Uh, so for everyone that can be fully vaccinated, I uh, really want to encourage that you do that. Um, it's also great to celebrate the fact that we're going to meet uh, and or re-meet uh, new friends. Memorial University has students, faculty and staff from more than 110 countries around the world. And this is going to be fantastic for all new and returning students 
to connect with new friends and extended family members, as well as meet those that you may not have seen for a while. Uh, we also have, and we'll, this will be discussed during the session, a phenomenal array of welcome activities, um, some even happening already today. So there is the uh, Three Bear Mountain Sunset Trail walk tonight or this evening, I guess weather dependent. <laughs> um, so definitely taking into, the, into account those activities you can get involved with. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say before I turn it back to our registrar is I want to ask you to mark October the 3rd in your calendars. Um, October the 3rd is will mark the return of the Grenfell Campus uh, First Nations All Nations powwow, uh, which is a phenomenal uh, time to experience and celebrate Indigenous cultures, uh, music, dance, food, and so on. So that's coming back uh, to, to in-person activity on October the 3rd. So that's another thing to celebrate. Anyway, I hope you get a sense that we're all excited, uh, all looking forward to getting everyone back to campus in the coming days. And I will turn it over to Carolyn to continue on and introduce the rest of the panel. Thanks everyone for being here. Thank you very much. So I'll introduce everyone on our panel and uh, then we'll move into sharing a bit of information. And again, throughout this session, if you do have questions, please use the, the uh, chat on the right hand side of the screen. So you've already met our vice president and uh, on our panel, we also have, and as I introduce you, if you could give a little wave so people know who I'm introducing, we have Dr. Kelly Vodden, our associate vice president of research and graduate studies. Dr. Michelle Piercy Normore, Dean of our School of Science and the Environment. Dr. Ken Jacobson, Dean School of Arts and Social Science. Dr. Todd Hennessy, Dean of our School of Fine Arts. Peggy Colburn, Director, Western Regional School of Nursing. Lorna Payne, Manager of our Learning Center. Jana Scalliott, Manager, Health and Diversity. Dr. Shauna Matthews, Academic Advisor in our Office of the Registrar. Sabrina Short, Manager, Student Housing. And Crystal Rose, head of uh, our public services area within the Ferris Hodgett uh, Library or for the Memorial University system as well. She can, she can help with all things uh, Memorial's library system. And last but not least, I think, I don't, uh, we have Raina Luther, who's the Director of Facilities Management and Ancillary Services. So we will start our session with updating you on a few things. Uh, and again, type in your questions if you have any as we go along. Um, again, we have received some in advance, so I, I will um, put those out there as we go through. So as we've said several times already, we are very excited to be welcoming you back to campus. Student housing is open, the campus will be operational, and services will be in full swing. This will be still somewhat of a transitional semester as we work towards more complete, uh, call it normalcy in January. I'm not sure why that is now. Um, so as you are aware, there are still a limited number of courses that will be offered remotely or may have a remote component. However, most of our courses will be in person. And so for our in-person classes, you will see that we have a tried, we've tried to allow some additional space for social distancing. So whenever possible, we have scheduled classes in classrooms that are larger than normal for the enrollment. So uh, over the last couple of weeks, many of you have probably seen that the university has made some announcements regarding mandatory masks and mandatory COVID-19 vaccines. So non-medical masks are mandatory for faculty, staff, students, and visitors. Masks will have to be worn in public spaces and common areas. So this will apply to classrooms and labs uh, and while you're at university facilities or while conducting memorial business off campus. Masks won't be required in student residence rooms, uh, individual offices or cubicles, or while you're seated to eat or drink. And you may notice uh, instructors, if they're able to maintain uh, two meter physical distancing, they, they may choose to teach without their mask on. Now, we did have a couple of questions uh, related to this that came in in advance. And um, so one of the questions, and I'm gonna throw this one out to Lorna Payne. 
uh, is I'm not able to wear a mask for medical reasons. What do I do? Uh, Lauren, would you be able to walk us through that uh, process? Sure thing, Carolyn. Um, so the expectation is that there will be some students who for various medical reasons or disabilities will not even be able to the mask regulations or mask policy, I should say, or the stance that Memorial has taken related to masks. In cases like that at Grenfell campus, uh, students are encouraged to uh, register at ACES and provide any documentation indicating the nature of the, uh, the medical condition that, you know, exempts them from wearing masks. Once they provide us with that documentation, we will provide you with a piece of um, a letter that indicates um, it's a letter that you take around and it's kind of your badge that says you don't need to wear a mask. You should carry that letter with you everywhere. You don't necessarily have to present that letter to anyone, but you should have that letter on you at all times. And that really is your exemption. Um, we will notify faculty members in your classes that you will be in classes and attending classes without uh, wearing a mask. So you should never be feel like you're going to have any confrontation when it comes to that. Uh, and uh, at any point, uh, you can come into ACES, which is where is the Disability Center for Grenfell Campus, and you can discuss any concerns that you have around mask wearing and, you know, if you, you run into any issues or concerns with it. But basically, if you are going to be looking for an exemption from wearing a mask at Grenfell Campus, you really need to contact ACES. Um, in the chat, I will put the, uh, the email where you can make that contact. It's studentservices at grenfellcampus.mon.ca. Thanks, Lorna. Our next question is related to student housing. So I will ask Sabrina to speak to this. Where will we have to wear masks in student housing complexes? So masks will need to be worn in all areas of student housing. So that includes our entrances, our hallways, laundry rooms, and lounge spaces. Students will be permitted to remove their masks when um, seated at a table and eating. And students do not need to wear a mask while in their private room space. Thank you, Sabrina. And actually, I have another question for you. It's unrelated to masks, <laughs> although I guess you students will need to wash their masks frequently. Yes. So we did have a student ask about the cost of doing laundry in student housing. So it's $2 to wash and $2 to dry. And our laundry machines uh, take a combination of quarters, loonies, and toomies, depending on the machine. Excellent. And uh, one last question that came in, in in advance that's relevant to this section is, um, and Shauna, I'll warn you, I'm, I'm throwing this one to you. I have a remote lecture uh, right after an on-campus class. Will there be somewhere quiet I can go on campus for the remote lecture? Thanks, Carolyn. So this is something we've definitely thought of. And so for a student who's registered for a remote class, there will be a number of different options for you uh, to take part in that class on campus. So we actually will be having specific space booked um, during your class time um, for you to take part in class. So we suggest students bring headphones or earbuds so that you can listen while everybody else in the class doesn't have to listen to your lecture. Um, and so it will be a designated spot for you for that class if you wish to participate there. And that list of classrooms will be made available uh, to all students for, through a variety of methods. We're also going to have a number of different, as we do every year, a number of different spaces available just generally for students. So whether or not it's the, uh, what we call the airport lounge or the arts and science atrium, uh, some students may uh, be in the library, some students may be in the residence room. Um, there's lots of different places on campus where you can sort of plug in a set of earphones and sit down uh, and take part in your lecture. But if you're really concerned, we will have, um, for the most part, uh, booked classrooms for students to attend their remote lectures in if they wish. Thanks, Shauna. And just so students are aware, that information is posted right now under the um, return to campus section of our website. So there's a table there where you can look at um, the course that you're in and it will indicate what classroom is available for you at that time. So we did have one question come in. It's unrelated to uh, 
masks, but I, I, we will try to answer these as we go along. So, Raina, you're on the hot seat here. Do all students need a parking permit for students living off campus? So, yes, everybody's going to need a parking permit to be able to park on campus this semester. The students go into a parking lottery. So to do that, there's applications on our website. You can drop by the facilities office and pick one up if you are unable to uh, print one from the website. AS 280 is the location of the facilities office. And then you can submit your application, which will go in the lottery draw. And if you are successful in that draw, you will be notified by email. It's going to be a, a bit of a group email. Um, and that will uh, you'll be notified by student number. Sorry, so we send out the list student number. So there'll be lots of emails that'll be going out. So keep an eye on your email. We'll send deadlines, important deadlines. We'll send the application uh, in that email as well. And uh, so the short answer is yes, you will need a parking permit. Thank you, Raina. So to touch on the vaccines, as you're aware, students, faculty, staff, and visitors to campus are required to have the first dose of an approved vaccination by September 7th and the second dose by October the 15th. Over the next few days, Memorial will launch the Secure Vaccine Declaration Form for students, faculty, and staff, which will be accessible through our website. So wait for more information or, or some uh, notification about that. This form will also include the process for requesting exemptions. Um, so we did have a question come in in advance. And I think this is actually relevant to the question in the chat as well. Um, and Janice, I'll be throwing this one to you to answer. Uh, I have not been able to get my vaccine in my, in my hometown. What do I do? Thanks, Carolyn. So uh, we will be having a vaccination clinic here at Grenfell campus on September the 6th, as well as September the 7th, and that's going to run from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you weren't able to get your vaccine before you come, then before you came, then that way you can attend our vaccine clinic here. There is no pre-registration, so it is a drop-in clinic. Uh, so you can just uh, drop in and get your vaccine. Uh, if you have an MCP, you can bring it. And if you don't, that's fine as well. You can just show up and uh, the people from Western Health will be able to, to do your vaccine. So if you do have any questions, um, uh, if you can't make Hopefully, most people will be able to make that uh, those clinics. But if for some reason that you can't, you can certainly send us an email, which is student services at grenfell.mon.ca, and we can uh, provide uh, additional information. Thank you, Janice. And, and just to clarify, I, um, a question just came in. You don't need to pre register for the vaccines, right? You just show up on those days, and there should be um, a few different nurses who will be able to assist our students. And uh, a follow up or somewhat unrelated question for you, Janice. Um, a student was concerned they don't have an MCP card. Um, will they still be able to get their vaccine? Yes, they will. You should probably bring a photo ID with you, but uh, you will be able to get vaccinated even if you don't have an MCP card. Okay, I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to clue up the sort of the COVID-19 section, and then uh, I will go back. I know there are a couple other questions about uh, parking and um, also a question related to housing. So we'll, we'll get to those now in a minute. The last thing I wanted to mention related to um, the COVID-19 sort of protocols and mandates is there will be a COVID-19 student awareness module that will be offered through Brightspace. And this will be a mandatory module for students to complete. Uh, it should only take between 10 and 15 minutes to complete and further information on this will be provided very soon. So, so again, just keep your eyes open for that. And I will say here, if there's anything we've learned over the, the last year is that things can change day to day. So for the most up-to-date information, please always check the return to campus section of the Grenfell website. And that's where we will have the most up-to-date information. So, you know, if we have more 
um, vaccine clinics on campus, that type of information, that would all be posted there. Um, okay, so let's just take some time to go back to some questions that came in. Um, in terms of what vaccine is being offered, uh, Janice, I'll throw this over to you, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to to answer. But are you? Do you have any information? Uh, no, I don't have any information. Uh, when so Western Health is doing the clinic, so whatever vaccine that they have uh, available, they will uh, bring with them. But if you have any questions, uh, you can certainly email student services at grandfall.mon.ca, and we'll try to get that information for you. Or you can come to the clinic and you can uh, ask that question yourself on the day of. Thank you, Janice. And uh, back to our parking conversation. I do think there was a question related to uh, before the parking lottery. Um, how does that work? Will students be able to park on campus until those decisions are made? So I put some dates in the chat just because I didn't want to overwhelm everyone with all the dates that things are going to be happening. But the essentially how it worked is the large parking lot behind campus, it's referred to as the P2 parking lot, um, that will be relaxed and you're, you'll be able to park in that lot without a permit up until the 20th of September. And if you see in the chat, the 20th of September is when we're going to be doing the lottery draw. So after the lottery draw is done, then that, per that parking lot will become a permitted lot again. So we're giving some flexibility, obviously, while we do the parking lottery. And then once it's done, if you don't have a permit, you aren't able to park in that lot anymore. So hopefully that's clear. There's a lot of information to do with parking. So uh, by all means, you can email myself. It's rluther at grenfell.mon.ca. I'll put it in the chat as well. And if you have any parking questions, uh, it might be easier for me just to answer them that way because I know the parking can get complicated. Okay, and then one more question that came in that's uh, re relevant for Sabrina in housing. And that's, uh, will we get to know who our roommate will be before our move-in day? Yes, you should have received that information to your email. Uh, if it got lost in your inbox, if you're not, <laughs> excuse me, if you're not able to see it, please email grenfellhousing at grenfell.mud.ca and we'll provide you with that information. Thanks, Sabrina. Okay, so moving on to welcoming you back to campus. Um, welcome events have already started for students who had to move in the area early. Um, but Lorna, can you give us an overview of what events are planned over the next week or so to welcome everyone back? Certainly. So we've been working for months on this. We we're so excited to have everyone here and we wanted to make sure that we had a variety of activities available so that students could get comfortable with our campus, comfortable with our beautiful city. And um, I think that you'll find that there's a, there's quite a selection uh, available. So you'll be able to pick from as many as you want and attend as many as you want. So um, like Carolyn mentioned, this past week we've had, uh, we've got, we've had two so far. There was one scheduled for tonight, a decision on tonight's event, which was the, uh, the uh, walk, the sunset walk, um, we'll make a little bit later today because we are in the middle, midst of a, a thunder and lightning storm. So I'm not really sure we'll be able to do it today. Um, there's a picnic scheduled for tomorrow and that picnic is, um, is open to anyone who's around campus. So if you're living on campus right now uh, or if you're in the Cornerbrook area and you want to attend, all you have to do is go to the Eventbrite uh, uh, site and register so that we know that you're coming. Um, so those events have just really started this week. Uh, starting this weekend, we really go into full swing when it comes to orientation activities. What you'll notice is there are actually two schedules that are on the go. So there's a main orientation schedule that's available to all or most under, all undergraduate students and many of the events are also available to graduate students. The places that you need to look um, are uh, the Grenfell Campus Orientation site. Uh, so if you go www.grenfell.mon.ca slash orientation, you'll get a list of the scheduled events. Um, but there's also a graduate schedule. So there are a number of uh, graduate specific uh, events that have, have been planned. So those are all located under www.grenfell.mon.ca slash grad events. So uh, I'll try to get that those addresses in the in the chat before I finish up. Um, anyway, 
This weekend is move-in weekend. Sabrina, I'm sure, is going to talk about that, so I won't go into that. But on Sunday afternoon, uh, we know your families and you have questions. So we are going to have a, uh, a Q&A session that will be available on site. So you can go to LC301 if you're here on site, or you can attend the session Facebook Live uh, uh, through Grenfell Campus's Facebook page. And what we'll do is we'll pre present you with a number of our panelists who will be available to um, answer any questions that you have. We'll also give you some a little bit of information and things for you to be aware of over the course of the next few weeks as you start here at Grenfell Campus. Very important session. There are no limits to this session. We're taking as many people as we can. And like I said, Facebook Live has opened up for it. Then starting next week, Monday's Labor Day, so you're going to see that there are quite a few places that are closed in Cornerbrook because of Labor Day. Uh, but we have um, we have an Explore Day, so we're trying to get you comfortable, like I said, with the campus and with the city. So we've got train rides that you can take, we've got hikes that you can get involved in, we've got a movie night that's scheduled, and uh, we've also got a bunch of tours of campus. Most of these things are already, you know, we've got quite a lot of people who have signed up under Eventbrite in order to participate. There are still openings. And when it comes to the tours, I think most of them are showing almost full. We are adding tour, tour guides as we see them filling up. So we will get you, we will get you a tour. So just put your name on the wait list and we'll be sure to do that. Starting on Tuesday will be the first day prior to, well, it'll be the day before classes start, but there are a bunch of things scheduled there, including your academic advising, which I'm sure Shauna will speak to in a, in a moment. There's a resource fair that will get you familiar with all of the different services that are available at Grenfell that will assist you, you know, socially, academically, and while you're here, at, you're here on campus. Um, and then throughout the week, we have an, a number of social types of events, so you can meet some new people, get comfortable here, Find out what's what. Find find some new friends so that you can uh, you know you can build that support system while you're here at Grenfell Campus. So, like I said, the two schedules are um, online. Uh, they're available to you. Take in as many activities as you want. Uh, get to know us, and you know uh, our doors are open. Grenfell's a very small campus, so we're willing to you know answer any questions that you have. All you have to do is drop in, and we'll be sure to. Uh, direct you in the right to the right place and make sure any any concerns you have are, are addressed. Thank you very much, uh, Lorna. So as you were talking, a couple of questions came in. Um, I think we have a couple questions for Sabrina again related to student housing. Uh, one is related to parking on move in day. Um, Sabrina, I don't know if you read, where do we park yes. on move-in day? So on move-in day, our lovely CEP officers will be directing the flow of traffic. Um, if you do uh, park next to the chalets, we ask that you don't overstay uh, the time in the parking spot. So just unload your items, move into your chalet, and then move your vehicle out of the lot so that another student could have the same opportunity. Um, CEP officers will be directing traffic, so we just ask that you be patient um, and follow their direction. And Sabrina, an earlier question was uh, residents move in dates. Is there opportunity to move in prior to the already announced date? If yes, who shall I contact? So students who have student numbers beginning with 2020 and 2021 can move in beginning on Sunday. Um, and for students uh, with all other student numbers, they can move in on the Monday. If you do have extenuating circumstances, or if you're a returning student and you'd like to move in on the Sunday, um, please email us at grenfellhousing at grenfell.mun.ca uh, about your situation and we could better advise you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I'm just making sure I haven't missed uh, anything else there. Um, so we're getting towards the end of our session, but I want to give you all some time to think about questions. So before we conclude, what I would like to do is give all of our panelists uh, a little bit of time to share any tidbit of information or, or advice that, that they'd like to share with you. Um, and, and as they're giving you some great advice, 
Um, you can type some more questions into the chat and we'll get to those uh, throughout. So let's start off with Dr. Kelly Vaden. Hi, I guess the biggest piece of advice I would offer is just to don't hesitate to reach out. We're all here uh, to welcome you and to make uh, your entrance into the campus as smooth as possible. So just don't be shy uh, about reaching out about any questions you have to any of us. And uh, we're we're anxious to make sure that uh, your, your program goes as well as possible. And if you have any questions about graduate studies, whether you're a new graduate student or an undergraduate student interested in staying on for graduate studies, please do reach out to our office and Lucas and Nada from the Office of Graduate Studies, Lucas Snell and Nada Simmons are also online. And uh, we look forward to meeting everyone. Leave it at that. Thanks. So I, I will stop the advice as we get questions in because I, I want to ad address uh, student specific questions. Um, so we have a question here um, about delays in arrivals at, on campus, especially for international students. Um, I know there are delays with international students getting their study permits. Um, so specifically, would like to know your provisions and advice on late resumption, online classes, and deferment. Um, Shauna, I'm going to hand this over to you, but obviously a lot of this will be very um, program specific will depend on if you're an undergraduate or a graduate student. So, but, but Shana, what can you share uh, about that? So we've had a number of students who've been in this similar situation. Uh, and so we advise that you would reach out to an academic advisor. Um, and it's really easy to book an appointment with an advisor. You just go to grenfell.mon.ca backslash advising appointment. Uh, and you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an advisor about your situation. The advisor may recommend um, if your late arrival is only by a few days, they may you know, advise that you reach out to your faculty members and just let them know you're going to be a couple of days late. If it's going to be a um, longer extended period, uh, there can be some discussions around is online remote courses an option? Is there availability in online remote courses? Or the possibility of deferring your application possibly until January. Um, but again, that's very dependent on what your program is, um, if there's remote options in your program, those types of things. So it is a very individual discussion. Uh, and so we would certainly encourage students to reach out to an advisor to have that one on one discussion so we can make the most appropriate plan for you. If Thank I could just you. add to that, Shauna, sorry, on the graduate programs, the graduate officers for your respective programs would be important uh, points of contact on that as well, because there may be differences in different programs and what the early activities are within your program. So that would be another important contact for graduate students. And Carolyn, if I can just jump in as well, and any international student who is planning to travel here, it would be really important to stay connected with us through our self-isolation at grenfell.mon.ca email address. Uh, we have an arrivals form where we can provide all kinds of information if you um, are able to, to travel here. So we can uh, provide some advice uh, to that as well. Excellent. And actually, uh, actually, Janice, I don't know if you saw the other question there. Uh, students wondering the best way to get from Deer Lake Airport to campus. Okay, so any international student should fill out the memorial arrivals um, um, form. And once you do that, we'll have one of our, our advisors um, tell you all the information that you need to know about how to get to campus or how to get to an off campus uh, facility. Uh, all of those questions are uh, based on a number of things. So I wouldn't want to uh, get into too much detail about a particular student situation. So if you give us an email, self isolation at grenfell.mon.ca, we'll be able to provide that information to you. But just generally speaking, there is a, an airport shuttle that that runs from Deer Lake Airport to um, to Corner Brook, and the airport is about 40, 40 minutes away from uh, from campus. Uh, Sabrina, another housing question. Do you have any information on how the kitchen will function? Is there a public toaster or microwave? Are there certain times the kitchen is open? Um, our lounge and kitchen facilities are open 24 hours a day. Um, there are a number of toasters and kettles and microwaves in each lounge, lounge space. Um, if you're interested in looking at photos of what 
the lounge and kitchen facilities look like, um, please uh, like our Facebook page, Grenfell Campus Student Housing, and uh, you'll be able to see photos of room spaces, kitchen spaces, um, all those great things. Okay, and another housing question, and Sabrina or Raina, you can answer this one. Will we have to show our vaccination record if we are vaccinated on move-in day? Uh, right now, it, no. Uh, once more information becomes available, students will have um, to go to a portal um, and upload that information. The students should see that hopefully in their emails, so keep an eye out for your emails um, in the next day or so. You'll be asked to complete a declaration form and upload any applicable information there. So you won't be asked to turn over your vaccination record on campus, but you will be asked to provide information through that declaration form. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a lull in questions. So I'll move on to our next uh, uh, tidbit of information from next up. Let, who will I call on? Crystal. Would you like to impart some words of wisdom? Oh, sure. Um, make sure you stop by the library and get familiar with the library and all of the things that you're going to need for your courses. Um, a lot of your uh, instructors are going to have things on e-reserve at the library that you can access through our website or through Brightspace. Um, and then we have lots of print material here that you're going to need. Um, and we have all kinds of fun stuff too that you can borrow at our library. So if you need a break from studying, we have things like board games, uh, we have a huge DVD collection. Um, if you need a phone charger, headphones, rulers, scissors, calculators, anything like that, um, you can borrow for free from the library. So all, all kinds of unexpected things at the Grandpa Library. Um, we're looking forward to our Games on the Lawn event uh, where we have um, fun outdoor games, oversized board games. Hopefully it doesn't get rained out. Uh, if it does, we're going to try to have it on a nice sunny day outside the library. Um, we do have uh, uh, some spaces in the library um, where we're going to be allowing group study. We know you want group study spaces. So we have four group study rooms that you can book online. And we also have other areas in the library where group study um, is a can be accommodated. We're going to ask you guys to wear your masks when you're doing group study in those areas um, and refrain from eating and drinking in group study areas. And then we've got whole other areas in the library where we have really safe, socially distanced study spaces set up um, that are silent, where you can sit by yourself. And in those areas, you can take your mask off to eat and drink. Um, so you can, uh, when you come into the library, we'll have lots of signage so you know where to go and where all those different areas are. And uh, like Kelly said, we're here to help you. So if you are confused at all about anything that you need for any of your courses, you're looking for readings, books, articles, stuff like that, come in, we're happy to help you. Thank you very much, Crystal. And we have a few other questions. So Lorna, students wondering how often will tutors and supports and accommodations be available? Uh, all academic supports, including tutors and uh, any of our instructional assistants will be available pretty much day one. The instructional assistants in writing and mathematics will be ready to go uh, as soon as you start classes on September the 8th. Um, we will be, you will be able to request a tutor even at, at that point. So it might take us a day or so for us to be able to set you up with tutors. Our supplemental instruction programming will start the first day of the second full week of classes. I forget, I meant to look up that date. So not the very first full week of classes, but the next full week of classes, supplemental instructions will start as well as open tutoring. So there will be open tutoring in introductory physics courses. There will be open tutoring in introductory chemistry courses and also in economics. And that means it's just drop in. So we'll identify the location and we'll put the announcements out of when those tutoring sessions will go. And all you have to do is drop into the location. Now, we will be, um, you know, we will be watching density and how many people are in the room. We're trying to get the biggest room that we possibly can so that we can spread people out and, and the student tutors can work with you safely. Uh, however, um, we may have to limit the numbers who, who enter the room. In that case, we may um, run the session a little bit longer so that students can come back, at, you know, in a, in, a, in a half hour's time and get their questions answered. So we'll make sure you get notification of any of the regulations around tutoring if we have to, uh, if we have to limit the numbers. But basically, day one, tutoring will be available and uh, our open tutoring sessions will come a week or so after that. 
Oh, Thank sorry. You. And in terms of accommodations, I'm sorry, I missed that part. If you're looking for academic accommodations, uh, when it comes to uh, any of your courses, whether or not it's classroom accommodations or accommodations related to test taking or note taking, anything like that, you need to make sure that you register with ACES. Um, again, you would contact student services at grenfell.mon.ca, um, indicate what your need is, and someone from ACES will get in touch with you. We will uh, take your documentation indicating, you know, supporting the need for the accommodations, and we will uh, ensure that the faculty members are made aware. When it comes to the accommodations uh, throughout the semester, most of those are handled by ACES. So we'll tell you where to go to write your exams, or we'll tell you where you can pick up your notes if you need notes from classes. It just really depends on what the accommodations are that you're, you're requiring. Thank you, Lorna. Um, Janice, I'm not sure if you can provide any advice to this question. It's related to um, health coverage. When does it kick in? Uh, Try to sign up following the instructions on GCSU site, but no luck. I'm not sure if you can help at all or I'll let you speak to it. It, it may end up having to go through the student union. But yeah, so if you're a domestic undergraduate student, it's best to contact the Grenfell Campus Student Union, the GCSU, and they'll be able to provide that. I do believe, Lorna, that there's a module on the Brightspace uh, page for orientation that relates to undergraduate domestic uh, health insurance. But any questions about health insurance for international students, which is the foreign health insurance, that would start on September 1st. And you can email um, international at grumfold.mon.ca if you have questions about that type of foreign health insurance. Uh, that is correct. There is a module under your Grenfell experience. That particular um, non-credit course related to orientation is still open. It's been added to your Brightspace dashboard. So if you go in, you'll see your Grenfell experience. If you go in there, you'll find five different modules. I think the module related to health insurance is located under module four, and it says uh, your student union health insurance, I believe. Um, my understanding is that um, uh, the health insurance really kicks in almost immediately when the semester starts. However, you don't necessarily get your health card until a, a month or so into the semester, but you can make a claim in order for any prescriptions or any, you know, any use of the health insurance that you'd have up to that point. You can definitely claim that back. Um, like Janice said, the GCSU is definitely the place that handles the health insurance and they'll be able to provide you with all that information and direction, um, um, you know, once you get on campus next week. The, I'm not, I'm not sure Janice, do you remember what their, uh, their office number is? They're located right on in the arts and science building on the main floor. Um, but I'm, I'm sure the number we'll figure that out and put it in the uh, chat for you. And I just put Josephine Belbin's uh, email address, so she would be able to uh, answer any questions related to health insurance and, and help you out with that. And I did notice that Lucas had posted anyone who has questions about graduate health and dental insurance that link is posted there as well. Yes, thank you very much for that Lucas. Um, okay, just bear with me here. I know I, I missed a uh, you up here. One was related to, I think there were a couple of textbook questions. Um, one was related to, I'm not finding it, around graduate students. Um, for graduate students, when can we expect to get a list of required textbooks? Will we get those before our first class? Um, Kelly, are you able to, I, I know you've you've been away for uh, for a few months, so it might, might not be fair to ask you to answer that. Yes, uh, well, and, and the deans may want to pitch in as well, but my understanding would be that those will be provided by your instructors on your first day of class. So I would anticipate that uh, you can get, and you may be able to reach out to your instructors in ahead of time to ask them to provide you with some readings as well, if, if you'd like to do that. But that would be with the instructor. Thank you, and, and uh, Raina, I'll ask you to answer this question. Um, Will the Mon Bookstore ship orders to campus? So I put some information in the chat. There's a website there that I included where people can search their specific course by course number and section ID to see what's required for their course. You can place the order that way. Uh, the 
bookstore will ship the orders to whatever address you provide. So if you don't have an address to send the books to and you need a special accommodation or if you need it to be received by us here at the bookstore, uh, just reach out to me again. I'll put my email there. It's further up in the chat. Uh, reach out to me and we can make an accommodation that way, but basically they will ship to whatever address you provide similar to any online ordering. Okay, and there was another uh, graduate studies uh, question there. Dr. Vaden, I'm not sure if you'd like to answer related to the uh, plagiarism software and whether or not um, Memorial is looking at, where is it? Will Mon give access to use Turnitin plagiarism detection software useful for student self-assessment for grad students in the future? Maybe uh, Crystal could probably speak to this. It's been some discussion over the years about the use of uh, plagiarism software. Um, and it, so if it's available, it would be available through the library. I think there have been some discussions, but not, but not currently yeah. available, is my understanding. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. Yeah, we, um, we definitely know that that's something that we're hearing from our students um, and even some of the faculty, uh, particularly graduate studies. Um, it's something that we've been advocating for. Um, it is a, a little complicated because there's a lot of people involved, not just on the Grenfell campus, but the St. John's campus when you're um, purchasing a subscription to something and giving all students access. Um, and so there's uh, various concerns around third party softwares that you're uh, submitting personal information to and, and things like that. Um, so we're, we've been talking with different um, student unions, different groups, um, trying to make this happen for a while. Um, I can tell you uh, one of the places it kind of really stalled out was at the provost office and we have a brand new provost. And so I'm hoping that we can get a little more um, support now uh, we, we've had some change over in administration that maybe um, people are going to let us purchase turn it in because I would do it <laughs> if I could wave a wand tomorrow I would give you guys all turn it in but it's a little more of a complicated process at the university so fingers crossed where Kelly and I've been working on it for a while and hopefully that's something we'll be able to um, accomplish soon and another piece of advice you might reach out to your supervisor because it is a thing it's something that uh, they may be willing to provide sometimes if you have specific software needs for your program your supervisors can help for sometimes graduate officers with access to software and it may be something where you could be shared with a few students who are interested in using that tool so um, that's an example of, some, of a software that, that you may be able to get some support with uh, and you might look to your supervisor for some some advice and help on that Thank you very much. Um, we have a question there. Do I have to do academic integrity again if I'm a second year student? Shauna, did you want to answer that? Sure. So if you've completed, successfully completed academic integrity, um, you shouldn't have to do it again. Um, so if, as long as you've done it once, you should be good uh, for your duration at Memorial unless there's any big changes to it. But if you've done it once, you should be good. Thank you. And there's a question here, and I apologize because I, I I'm not sure if I'm totally understanding it. Um, sorry. How how and when do we apply for introduction and welcome classes? I'm not finding it in front of me now. So I I apologize if I'm misunderstanding. So if you're talking about registration for fall courses. Um, you should already be registered. And if you do need assistance with that, you can email info at grenfell.mon.ca. Um, if you're talking about orientation events that may require pre-registration, um, I think a lot of those are available right now for registration. Is that correct, Lorna? It is, and all you have to do is go under, uh, uh, grenfell.mon.ca slash orientation and the listing of events are there. And if you have to register, the event bright link is right there for you to uh, for you to lot to click on and you can make your registration right there. Perfect. And I apologize if I misunderstood your question. You can uh, ask it, it differently if, if I didn't answer appropriately. Um, Sabrina, does student housing have hardwired internet access along with Wi-Fi? Yes, all of our room spaces have an ethernet port, uh, so you can directly plug in a laptop if you have an ethernet 
uh, cord um, and Wi-Fi is provided campus wide. Okay, thank you. And Shauna, I'm not sure if you know off the top of your head, the required grade for uh, academic integrity. I don't know if you know that off the top of your so head. So it is 80%, um, but the student asks if I have to do is do the test until I get 80%. Oh, if you keep taking the test over and over, you will eventually get locked out. So don't just jump to the test part and try and do it because you will get locked out. So go through the slides, read the information. Um, if you do get locked out, uh, you can email info at grenfell.mun.ca and we'll provide you information on how you can get that course unlocked because I think it does lock you out after three attempts. And when do first year students need to have academic integrity completed? Great question. So technically you have to have it completed, successfully completed before you will be assigned a registration time for the winter semester. So registration times usually come out mid-October with students registering for January, early November. So you definitely wanna have it done by then. But I would strongly suggest you do it before you arrive. Once you arrive on campus, you're going to be quite busy during the first week or two of the semester. Uh, you're going to kind of forget about it. Uh, and then you're likely going to show up in the registrar's office wondering how come you don't have a registration time. Uh, and then we're going to send you on to get academic integrity done before you get a registration time for the winter. So I strongly encourage you to get it done before you arrive, but you technically have until early to mid-October to complete it. Thank you. And there was another question related to health insurance. If I don't need dental insurance included in my fees, can I just subtract that from my tuition total? So again, there are different insurances depending on if you're undergraduate, graduate, international, domestic student. Um, but for example, for undergraduate domestic students, there is an opt out um, process that you can follow. So again, I would encourage you to speak with the GCSU or just even if you just Google um, health and dental opt out GCSU, there is a, a form there that uh, you can complete to show proof of coverage. But again, it will depend on your um, what insurance it is that you're trying to opt out of. Okay, have I missed any questions that have come in? All right, we're getting close to three o'clock, so I'm probably not going to, I'm not going to call on all of our panelists for your words of wisdom because uh, I, I don't want to go past uh, three o'clock, but would anyone, anyone from our panel, does anyone want to say something before we conclude? Dr. Sutherland. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you, all the students uh, for choosing Grenfell campus. You have made the right choice in choosing Grenfell and, and Memorial University. And a huge thank you to all the faces that you can see on the screen. This is an incredible team of uh, amazing professionals, professors, academics, staff members uh, that have been working very, very hard uh, over the last weeks and months and days and hours and minutes and seconds to um, ensure everybody has a successful and safe as possible fall semester. So thank you to all of you uh, for all of your work as well. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you very much. And this is the last call. Okay, I will get the final word. Um, I do want to thank our panelists and everyone for joining us. Um, I, I will answer that one last question on the 1st day of classes. You just make your way to the 1st class in your schedule, assuming it is an in person class. And if you do have questions, email us at info at grenfell.mon.ca. Uh, we do look forward to seeing you um, next week from Tuesday to Friday. We will have an ask me booth set up in the arts and science atrium. So, if you're not sure where to turn, just pop by. Uh, we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, we'll also have copies of the orientation schedule there if you want to find out more about what's happening. Throughout the semester, though, my one bit of advice is ask questions. Anyone, uh, any of our staff, faculty uh, around campus are here to help you. We want to see you succeed. So don't hesitate to ask questions. If you are just, you're not sure who to ask, 
ask anyone and, and they will do their best to help you out. So thanks again, and we will see you next week. Take care.